What you're seeing on your screen is my old laptop struggling to boot up. After working from home for almost three months, I realized that there is nothing more frustrating than having to spend your entire day on a slow machine. As soon as the lockdown ended, the first thing I did was get myself an SSD. And since someone was asking us to be Atmanirbhar, I also decided to get the installation done on my own. Once I had the SSD installed, the change in performance was mind blowing. The laptop booted faster, applications launched instantly and everything was generally blazing fast. And to be very frank, the installation turned out to be much easier than what I had expected. So if you have an old laptop and you feel the need for speed, then this video is for you. Also, as you can see, my laptop used to take an agonizing almost four minutes just to boot up and reach the login screen. Stick around till the end of the video to see exactly how much faster the boot up was once I put in the SSD. We'll start with what an SSD is, the types of SSDs and the pros and cons of getting one. Next, we'll go through the actual installation of the SSD and the things to be considered therein. Lastly, we'll move on to the software part of things where we clone the operating system and applications onto the SSD. So what is an SSD? SSD stands for Solid State Drive and is a medium to store your digital data on. An SSD is a relatively new medium though it has been around for quite some years now. The first one actually came out in 1991. The SSD was introduced as an improvement over the existing storage medium, the SGD. SGD stands for hard disk drive and has been the de facto storage medium for quite some time now. The SSD has the same dimensions, 2.5 inches and the same connecting pins as the SGD and therefore can be replaced directly in place of a SGD. The difference between the two is because of what lies inside. A SGD is basically like those record players we had in ancient times. They are mechanical systems with rotating disks, spindles, arms and whatnot. And that is what makes them slow as well. An SSD on the other hand is just like an oversized USB drive. It does not have any moving parts and instead uses flash memory chips. Since there are no moving parts, an SSD is faster and lighter than an SGD. It also consumes less power and is drop resistant. Coming to the drawbacks, though they have become cheaper over time, SSDs are still expensive when compared to SGDs. Today, an SSD would be almost three times as expensive as a similar sized SGD. Another important thing to know is that SSDs have limited read write cycles and are generally rated for around 100,000 cycles. However, the pros of an SSD far outweigh the cons and in 2020, there is no other upgrade that would give you the same performance boost as an SSD. Coming to the types of SSDs, there are two major variants based on the form factor, the 2.5 inch one and the M.2. The 2.5 inch format uses the SATA interface and is very similar to the 2.5 inch SGDs. The newer M.2 format is very compact and is actually only two centimeters wide. However, the M.2 connector is generally seen only on newer laptops. The M.2 SSDs further can either have the older SATA interface or the newer NVMe interface. The NVMe interface is much faster and found only on the latest laptops. They are also the most expensive among the three. Before you order yours, be sure to check if you have an M.2 slot on your laptop and get the appropriate SSD. My Dell Inspiron 3542 does not have a M.2 slot and therefore I got a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Now that we have some SSD gyan, let's look at what configurations we can have. In my case, I have a 1TB SGD with two partitions. The C partition has my Windows operating system and applications, while the E partition has all my personal files like documents, photos and videos. We have two SSD configuration options. One. I can replace my entire 1TB SGD with a brand new 1TB SSD. However, as I mentioned earlier, this could be very expensive, almost in the 10,000 rupees range. Also, you can see that my E partition is close to full. Now, SSDs aren't as great when they are nearly full. Also, SSDs are great for fast reads, but writing huge files will be much slower, which is why the second configuration makes more sense to me. Here, I'll add a smaller SSD around 240GB and move my C partition, which has the OS and applications, to the SSD. 
and I'll keep the entire 1TB SGD space for my personal files. That way, the OSINT applications will be available on the faster SSD and since they aren't returned to as often, the performance would be much better. Do keep in mind the fact that my entire C partition holds only 115 GB of data, which is less than half the 240 GB space on the SSD I am getting. In case you do not have your OS on a separate partition, or if your OS partition is much bigger than 240 GB, then you will have to get a suitably sized SSD. Once you have decided on the configuration, the next question is, where do I add this extra SSD? Generally, there is only one hard drive slot on most laptops, unless you have an M.2 slot as discussed earlier. The answer to this question lies in a rather unused device on your laptop, the optical drive. We can remove the optical drive and put the extra drive in the optical drive slot. And for this, you need something called the SGD Caddy. The SGD Caddy is an adapter which lets you connect your SGD into the optical drive slot. And if you know golf, a caddy is a person who carries your golf clubs. Similarly, a SGD Caddy carries your SGD. Pretty clever name, I must say. There are two popular variants of SGD Caddies available depending on the thickness of your optical drive the 9.5 mm and the 12.7 mm ones. Do check your optical drive and order a suitable size. In my case, it was a 9.5 mm one. So now you have two drive slots and two drives, one SSD and a SGD. Though you can put either SSD or SGD in either slot, it is preferable to put the SSD in the internal slot and the SGD in the optical drive slot. This is because in most cases, the internal slot has a higher connection speed as compared to the optical drive slot. The hardware I got is as follows. The SSD is a crucial BX500 with a 240GB capacity. This was among the entry level SSDs available and came with a 3 year warranty. If you can stretch your budget a bit, consider getting a Samsung one since they are known for better performance and have a longer warranty of 5 years. The SGD Caddy on the other hand was a generic one and you will find many of them online. Links to the products are provided in the video description below. And with that, we have everything we need for the installation. The SSD and the SGD Caddy. So without any further delay, let's get this installation started. First things first, switch off the laptop, unplug the power cord and remove the battery. Open this screw and you should be able to access the hard drive slot. You can now see the SGD, the Wi-Fi antenna and the RAM. Unscrew the screws holding the SGD in place and with that your SGD is out. The first thing you'll note is how light the SSD is compared to the SGD. You can also remove the insulation sheet fixed to the SGD. Next, we will open the optical drive, again just one screw. The optical drive has a cover on its front. We'll have to remove this so that we can put it on the SGD caddy. The SGD caddy does come with a front cover, but the original would look and feel better. Stick in a safety pin in the opening near the eject button and the optical drive will slide out. Carefully pry open the front cover. I had to struggle a bit, but managed to take it off without breaking it. Stick the front cover on the SGD caddy Make sure it fits properly. Slide the SGD into the caddy. Use the screws provided to fix the SGD in place. On the optical drive, you will find a small bracket that holds it in place. Remove this and attach it to the SGD caddy. Slide the SSD into the internal SGD drive slot. Put the SGD caddy into the optical drive slot and screw it into place. Replace the cover and the battery. And with that, the hardware installation is complete. Easy, wasn't it? Once the drives were installed, I powered up my laptop, hoping that everything was fine. And imagine my shock when I don't see the SSD in the file explorer. My first thought was, did I just screw up a brand new SSD? A moment later, however, when I checked the device manager, I could see that the SSD was showing up there. So what was missing then? Turns out 
SSD would need to be initialized before it would show up in the file explorer. Doing that is optional since the cloning of the OS would take care of it, but I decided to do it anyway. To do this, you need to go to the start menu and type disk management. Clicking on the create and format hard disk partitions will open up the disk management window. As soon as that happens, a pop-up comes up for initializing the disk. You can also see SSD as disk 1, which is uninitialized. Choose the GPT option for partition style. This is the newer one and is a better option. Once you do that, disk 1 will show up as online. Right click and click on new simple volume and a wizard comes up. Keep the default values. Choose the drive letter. In the next screen, choose the file system and set the volume label. Here again, NTFS is a newer version so we'll go with it. And we will perform a quick format. Click on finish and you'll see that the disk 1 is formatting and in a moment it will be up and running. Now finally you'll be able to see the SSD in the file explorer. The next step is moving the operating system and all your applications onto the SSD. Now there are two ways you can go about it. The first one is start with a clean installation of the operating system on the SSD followed by installing all your applications onto it. In my case, since I had a lot of applications, I thought this was cumbersome and I decided against it. I chose the second option. The second option is cloning the original partition onto the SSD. Cloning creates an exact copy of the OS and the application along with the underlying partition structure onto the SSD. However, this isn't as easy as doing a Ctrl C and Ctrl V. What you would need is a cloning software. There are many options around, but unfortunately, most of them now require paid versions. However, there is one free software that does the job just fine, and that is Macrium Reflect. The link to the website is in the description below. Choose the Home Use option. Providing an email is optional. Run the download agent and your software will be downloaded. Run the installation and choose the Home Editions license. Registration is optional and I skipped it. Once the installation completes, you will be seeing this interface. You can see both the disks here. Disk 1 is the hard disk drive and disk 2 is the SSD. On the SGD, you can see partition C and partition E. Along with that, you'll also see four other partitions which don't show up in the file explorer. These include the boot partition and the recovery partition. We would need all of them except partition E to be cloned onto the SSD. Click on the clone this disk link below disk 1. In the lower pane, click on select a disk to clone to and here choose this 2 which is the SSD. Click on each of the partitions on the SSD and click on delete existing partition. This will give us a clean drive to begin with. Next, one by one, drag each of the partitions to be cloned onto disk 2. I realize this later, but it would be easier to drag the biggest partition, partition C, in the end after all the rest have been dragged. This will resize the free space automatically. However, since I did not know this, I had to free up space manually to make room for the last partition. You can do this by going into the clone partition properties and adjusting the free space manually so that the last partition can fit in. In this case, I freed up 857 MB since that is the size of the last partition. Now click on next. Skip the schedule screen since we are doing it only once. Review the summary. Next, you have an option of saving the backup definition. You can skip this as well. Next, you'll see a warning saying that the data on the drive will be overwritten. Confirm and proceed. This begins the cloning procedure and in my case, it took almost three hours. Once the cloning is complete, you can now see that the SSD has exactly the same structure and contents as the original SGD. An exact copy of the Windows installation is now available on the SSD. Now that the cloning is complete, you would be expecting your laptop to boot up faster. But then you realize that nothing has really changed and the laptop is as slow as ever. This is because though a copy of the OS and applications is available on the SSD, 
the laptop is still referring to the copy on the old SGD. So this is where the BIOS settings comes into the picture. The BIOS settings tells the laptop where to look for the boot up instructions. These settings would need to be updated so that it now points to the SSD. To do this, you will have to enter the BIOS settings screen. You can restart the laptop and press F12 to enter the BIOS settings screen. However, different laptops can have different keys to enter the BIOS settings. I therefore prefer the following option. Go to the start menu and click on settings. Once there, click on update and security. Then go to recovery and click on restart now under the advanced startup tab. The laptop will now restart and you will land on the options screen. Click on troubleshoot and then the advanced options. Now choose UEFI firmware settings and click on restart. Now you are in the boot settings. Go to the boot tab. Here you can see all the various boot options that are available. However, SSD is not there right now. To add SSD as an option, go to the file browser add boot option. In my case, partition 2 is where the boot partition is and that is where the EFI file is present. The EFI file has instructions about where to boot from. Click on partition 2 and here you will find a folder called EFI. Click on it and go to the boot folder inside this EFI folder. Here you will find the bootx64.efi file. This is the EFI file required for the boot up. Click on it. Once you clicked on it, you will get an option to set a name for this boot option. I went with SSD. Now you will see that a boot option called SSD is showing up. However, it is at number 5. This means the laptop will look at the first 4 options before coming to the SSD option. But since we want the SSD to be the first preference, we will have to click on the boot option 1 and then choose SSD. With this, the SSD has become the first preference. You can now go to the exit tab and click on save changes and reset. Now the laptop will restart and boot from the SSD. Now check out for yourself how fast it is. That's right, just 45 seconds. From the initial 4 minutes on the SDD, the boot time is now down to a mere 45 seconds. That is a massive 80% improvement in boot time. And the change in performance was dramatic with applications as well. All applications including Chrome open up instantaneously. As I said earlier, everything was blazing fast. So there it is. For a mere 4000 rupees, I have managed to transform my old slow laptop into a super fast machine. So if you are struggling with an old laptop, I think you should get an SSG too. Hope this video helps you and if it does, do share it with your friends.